I mean, Edinburgh suits itself very well to crime fiction because it is a city of haves and have nots. It's a city of great wealth and great poverty. Um, it structurally is a city that's divided. The new town and the old town, the rational and the irrational. And that's what happens in Jekyll and Hyde. You take a very rational, scientific man and you suddenly allow his irrational side, his Hyde, to emerge. What does that do to the kind of rational man? So Edinburgh's got that. It's got that built into its structure that it is a city of rational and irrational, a city of good and evil, a city of haves and have-nots, a city of light and dark. So it lends itself perfectly to crime fiction. Where it goes in the future, who knows? I mean, the, 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 you can't suddenly make it a modernist city because, you know, because so much of it you can't build on. You can't suddenly build on Castle Rock. You can't suddenly build on Arthur's Seat. So there are these immutable places that will never change. And now, you know, you could drop Robert Louis Stevenson or James Hogg in bits of Edinburgh now and they would not see any change at all. They would turn the corner and see cars and think, what the hell is that? But you could drop them in bits of the lawn market, some of the closest off the Royal Mile, down by the Water of Leith, um, and, and, or up by Arthur's Seat, and they would think this city is unchanged. But Edinburgh, of course, is changing underneath. Um, the psychological makeup of the city evolves. And the city itself, structurally, does evolve. You know, suddenly we get trams again. That's a very modern thing, apparently. We got rid of them in the early 60s, now they're back. Commerce comes and goes. But it's a city that's always hidden itself away from the world. It's a city that didn't make things. It wasn't a big industrial city. It was a trading city. Well, Leith was a trading port. But it was a city that was built on invisible industries. You know, whether it was the law, religion, head of the Church of Scotland, whether it was banking, insurance. You know, huge things would be happening, but happening below the surface. You couldn't see ships being made or cars being made. Things were happening below the surface. And I think that's the way it will keep on going. That has always been the way of it in Edinburgh. It's a, it's a very Presbyterian city. It's a very a city of um, people who want to be seen as being upright. And they're not show-offs. People don't walk around in Armani suits driving Lamborghinis. So although it's a city of great wealth, it's a city that doesn't show off its wealth. It's very aware that there are certain, there's a certain decorum that goes with that. And uh, I like that. I mean, I like, I like finding those spaces, those little interstices where the, the haves and the have-nots meet, the underworld and the overworld, the Hyde and the Jekyll. That's what I do in all my books. And I find Edinburgh f endlessly fascinating as a city that seems to sum up the human condition.